dun, 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 dun. Oh, hey, hola. I know. Don't give me a hard time, Mr. Wara. You're not even humming with the right music there. I know, but don't you just love that music in the background? Hey, hey, nice little intro. Welcome, my friends, to another mad video. This is about, all about problem solving here. Looks like using multiplication. We are doing problem solving lesson 8.2 of your Go Math program. Here's our essential question. Let's take a look. Our essential question basically says, this is how can the strategy draw a diagram help you solve fraction division problems by writing a multiplication sentence? Okay, I like that's our focus. It's like our learning target. I say, let's do it. Now it says we have to unlock the problem. Let's go ahead and do this first here. Um, you know, even before we start that, I'm going to ask a question. I know you guys can't answer it because you're out there. You know, you're out there. And, but I want us to think, you know, like, why is drawing a diagram a useful approach to solving a problem? I mean, why do we do it? Think about that, Mr. War. Why do you draw a diagram? Well, thank you for asking. You know, I would say that, you know, it basically allows you to, to organize data or like information. And, you know, it can also help visualize, you know, so you can see the problem, uh, making it more likely that you'll get the answer correct as opposed to, as opposed to making a mistake. Okay, that's how I would answer. Did I make it to the next category? I think you did. So I posed that question for the purpose of thinking about how we solve problems and how important it is to do a diagram, which is what we'll be doing in this lesson. So let's go ahead and take a look at the problem. It says Erica makes six submarine sandwiches and cuts each sandwich into thirds. How many one-third size sandwich pieces does she have? Okay, I like that. Well, first thing it says, what do I need to find? So reading the problem, what do I need to find? Yeah, I need to find like the number of one-third, it says it right here, uh, one-third size sandwich pieces. Uh, Erica has after she cuts six sandwiches into thirds. Okay, with my supersonic warp speed, I'm going to type that up for you. So what information do I need to use? Well, I need to use the size of each piece, right, of sandwich and the number of sandwiches she cuts. In this case, we'll put in sandwiches. Okay, how will I use the information? Well, I can, definitely I'm looking over here, I can draw a diagram, which is what our focus is this time, is to draw a diagram to organize the information from the problem. Then I can use the organized information to find what our goal was, which was the number of uh, one-third size sandwich pieces Erica has after she cuts them into thirds. Okay, so you can see we have that. All I did was copy that right down there for us. Okay, so since Erica cuts six submarine, six submarine sandwiches, my diagram needs to show six rectangles to represent the sandwiches we have here. I can divide each of the six rectangles into thirds, okay, to find the total number of thirds in six rectangles. I can multiply the number of thirds in each rectangle by the number of rectangles. So if I'm starting off with six sandwiches here, and you can see here, and I'm going to divide that by one third because I basically cut them, or Erica has, in two thirds. So with the six sandwiches divided by the one third is the same as saying six times, and there's six sandwiches with three pieces in each, which is going to equal then 18 pieces. And that's right, this is going to disappear on me, so I'll get another pen and rewrite that. So that's there, okay? Cool. So there you go. Pretty, pretty simple. I like it. So Erica has, and of course, we just wrote that up here, 18 one-third size sandwich pieces. Uh, I just explain how you can use multiplication to check your answer. Well, we just talked about that. I'll write this one here. Um, what we did was, is this, basically, see, I can multiply uh, the quotient and, and the divisor to see if the product is equal to the dividend. We'll go over this to make sure that we're clear. 
So let's take a look at that. It says here that I can multiply the quotient and the divisor to see if the product is equal to the dividend. Okay, so let's take a look at this here, this explanation. This can be kind of confusing. We need to understand that, first of all, that this here is our dividend. This here is our divisor. And our answer in this problem was 18. So divided by 1 third is equal to 18. Because we took those six submarine sandwiches and we cut those into thirds. Now we can take those thirds. We took the thirds and we said, well, let's, there's three of them in each one. Multiply it back to the six sandwiches has given us 18. So what this basically says is that I can multiply then the quotient here. This is the answer to division problem and the divisor, which is one third, to see if that product is equal to the dividend. And 18 times one third, if you recall from previous lessons, is equal to 6, because that's just 18 divided by 3, which equals 6. And so that gets us back to where we were looking at. All right, let's move on to the next page. Now it says here, try oh, look at this smart. What are you doing? You're just trying to tempt me with a hamburger? Oh, man. And you, come on. No, you have to stop the temptation. You make me want to go to Smashburger. Hey. And that was not an endorsed or sponsored advertisement. Hey, try another problem. It says, this is Roberto is cutting three blueberry pies into halves to give to his neighbors. All right, nice guy. It says, how many neighbors will get one half of a pie? All right, so what do we need to find out here? Let's come on down here. So read the problem. What do I need to find? Well, I need to find how many neighbors will get half of a pie. So let's write that down. I need to find how many neighbors will get, there you go. So I need to know how many neighbors uh, will get half of a pie. I need to use the size of each piece of a pie and then the number of pies Roberto is cutting. Okay, so we have that. So I definitely need that. So I'm going to put, I need to use the size of each pie, I mean of each piece of pie, and the number, I'm just going to use that for number of pies, uh, Roberto uh, is cutting. Okay. Very good. So this is really important. How, now, how will I use the information? How will I use it? Um, well, I could take that information. I can do what we did the last time. I can draw a diagram to organize the information from the problem. Then I can use the diagram to, to find the number of neighbors that will each get a half of a pie. Okay, I'm going to do my supersonic speed and type that in for you right now. Ding. Voila. So there you go. I can draw a diagram to organize the information from the problem. Then I can use the diagram to find the number of neighbors that will get one half of a pie. So let's start working on that diagram. So we're solving the problem at this point. So since Roberto is cutting three pies, my diagram should have three circles maybe to represent the pies. I can divide each of these three circles into halves. I've kind of already started doing that. So let's go ahead and do three pies. There's one, two, three. And then we're going to need to divide those into halves. We'll put those over there. So that actually shows my three pies in halves. <clears throat> I can multiply the number of halves in each circle by the number of circles. Super easy, eh? Even a cave boy or cave girl could do that. Okay, so three pies, we're dividing that by the halves, because we're breaking them into halves, that's going to equal, and we could put this in a multiplication sentence, so th that would mean the three pies times the number of halves, here we have two halves, okay, so you have three pies times, and then their halves, it's going to equal six, and there's two halves in one whole, basically why we multiply by two, and there you go, so I'm going to write those thoughts down here for you, and there you go. There's some of the notes that we talked about. So since Roberto's cutting three pies, my diagram needs to show those three circles 
to represent the pi's. I can divide each of these three circles into halves, which is what we've done here. And then to find the total number of halves in the three circles, I can multiply the number of halves, which is what we have up above. Three divided by one half is three times the number of halves. Um, in each circle by the number of circles. And that's where we got to two, and we end up with six. My friends, this is another video. It has come to a close. Now, as always, live long and prosper.